In order to properly understand what you just saw, you need some more information. So I'm standing next to the dilution refrigerator that had that liquid helium jet squirting out of it. Specifically, you can't see the refrigerator part from this angle, just the molecular beam epitaxy system attached to the bottom. But regardless, inside this refrigerator, there's something called the main bath, which holds all the liquid helium that you saw squirting out. And inside the main bath is a superconducting electromagnet. Now it needs to be in the liquid helium main bath so that it's kept at temperatures where it can superconduct below its TC, its critical temperature. However, interestingly, magnets also have a critical magnetic field and a critical current. If you exceed those, then it will also lose its superconductivity and so-called go normal. Now this happens because of how superconductivity actually works in the first place. Superconductivity arises from the bosonic properties of Cooper paired electrons, but these Cooper paired electrons resulting from phonon exchanges are quite fragile. If they're exposed to high temperature, high magnetic field, or high current, they will break apart and go normal. So what you saw there is us ramping up the magnetic field until it got too high. Maybe a winding shifted or something during a cool down, and as a result there was some sort of unexpectedly high magnetic field concentration that exceeded the critical field and went normal in one spot, but that one spot becoming resistive meant that all the current flowing through the magnet, when flowing through that part, would cause a lot of heat to be produced. And that heat would exceed the critical temperature of the rest of the coil in sequence, propagating outwards from the place where it first went normal. This means that ultimately the entire magnet in a big cascade goes normal and produces a ton of heat in the process as the collapsing magnetic field continues to drive a current in the now normal electromagnet. The resistance keeps converting the magnetic field's energy into heat, and that boils off a ton of liquid helium building up pressure, and then the tube that carries the liquid helium during a transfer to the bottom of the doer carries liquid helium out into the atmosphere as soon as the port's opened. The port needs to be opened if the pressure isn't to build so high that the refrigerator bursts, well, the refrigerator doer anyway, now you may think, well, isn't there a recovery system? Yeah, there is. You may be able to hear the meter going in the background. The thing is, is that big rush of helium vapor overwhelms the recovery system. So we need to open the fill port, and sadly that means that a whole bunch of liquid helium gets spurted out into the atmosphere and it instantly boils. We lost uh, somewhere around $500 of liquid helium in under a minute because the magnet spontaneously quenched. It's actually quite sad because of how precious helium is. Think about that next time you use a helium balloon. Also, in case you're wondering, the guy on the dilution refrigerator that was standing there, he was standing there because he opened the port. I pulled out my phone and filmed it because it was kind of an interesting thing to see. And his name is Nick Llewellyn. He's a grad student that works in the lab here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Dietrich out. Well, that's probably like $500.